I'm going to talk now this morning actually with Elisa's husband, Reverend Randy Becker. He also is a published author. You will find his work featured through absolutely amazing ebooks. We're going to talk this morning about Randy's latest book, which is entitled Reclaiming the Soul of Your Faith. Randy, thank you so much for being on this morning. Jenna, good to be here, as always. Well, you have a tough act to follow, Randy. I do, I do. <laughs> Your wife yeah, was yes. just on, and she was wonderful. Now, Reverend Randy, I want to talk with you for a minute about, about your career. You've actually spent the majority of your life working as a minister. I have. I'm just completing 42 years in ministry. Mm -hmm. But along the way, I've done a few other things, too. I mm -hmm. uh, was a research physicist for a couple of summers and a railroad engineer. Okay. So. so a little broad, right. a broad range of, of professions. Now, Reverend Randy, let's talk about your book this right. morning. Tell me a little bit about the inspiration behind reclaiming the soul of your faith. Well, Jenna, what I were finding increasingly in my ministerial work is that people would come to me and they would talk about how no matter what religious path they were on, that they'd come enthusiastically to it in the beginning, but now they're beginning to have some questions because it mo felt more and more to them like they were going through someone else's religion but not their own. And I thought, well, there must be some way we can help them to reclaim their own sense of faith because people have this profound sense of connecting to something larger, finding meaning in life, and to have that lost because somehow the institution of religion has obscured it, taken it away, is sad. We know in most recent statistics that about one quarter of the people in the United States, in fact, say they're spiritual but not religious. What's that all about? I think it's about the fact they've not had a vehicle to be able to explore what faith patterns mean to them. They know what churches say it should be, but what about for them personally? So this book was uh, written to help people, inspire people to try to look at their own faith. I love it. I, yeah. I love the yeah. idea behind it. So it kind of sounds like you're reaching out to people who were drifting then. Drifting and also people who are not drifting. There was a Gallup poll study done back, I think it was in the 1990s, that asked people who would say their faith was very high if they could t pinpoint the one moment when faith became very important to them. And in fact, the moment they could pinpoint almost all of them was a point when they questioned all of their faith. So even those who are very active in a church, if they haven't gone through that phase of asking, what are my beliefs? What is the source of my spirituality? Their faith won't be as strong as those who've been willing to ask those deep questions. So it's for those who are searching, the seekers, so to speak, for the people who have no religion, but also for those who are active in religion but wanting to say, am I in the right place within my religion? What's the response been to the book so far, Reverend Randy? Uh, very positive. Uh, a number of people using it in religious education courses for adults. It's, there's 10 exercise chapters within it, uh, and they use it there for discussion. And then a lot of individual reactions from readers of it who say, I got stuck on chapter 3 because that's where I was in my life, and the exercises you proposed, I realized I had never taken the time to do. One of my colleagues here in town who's uh, of a totally different religious persuasion than I am, keeps calling me up and asking me about things in the book because he's fascinated by it. Mm -hmm. He said, those are the kind of questions we should have studied in theological school, and we didn't do it. Okay. Now, Reverend Randy, obviously this book was written to be helping people, right. like you're describing, but did you find that it actually ended up helping you as well? Oh, every book you write for yourself. Mm -hmm. And you'll find the book is set in a conversational tone. This is not a theological work. This is not a philosophical work. This is like me and you having a conversation about what's important to us. Mm -hmm. And of course, if I'm asking you a question, I've got to be asking it of myself at the same time. Mm -hmm. And then the conversation flows back and forth. And I share in the book what many people have found as answers to these things, believing that as we hear other people's stories, and the stories out of all the different traditional religions of the world, we begin to get a sense of how we might connect to other stories, other people, other lives. Now this was book number two for you. Right. Are you working on another book as we speak? Well, I had another book already published. Mm -hmm. It's called The Venice Stories. Mm -hmm. and it's a series of stories set in Venice, Italy, mm -hmm. on a sabbatical I spent there. And we'll have to talk about that some other time, because that's a very different nature. Mm -hmm. I am working right now on the Adult Education Guide to reclaiming the soul of your faith for those congregations that want to use it as an education series because while the book could stand on its own 
there's certain leaders would like to be able to have the option of having something more. So that's the summer's activity is to think about what it would be to, what kind of guide would be helpful to a lay leader in, in using this book. Okay, so you have a busy, a busy summer ahead of you then, I right? do. <laughs> I'll be doing that plus planning my entire church year and reflecting. I think the thing that we don't do in modern society enough is just stop and reflect. And that's part of what I think the book does. The book may just be an excuse for you to take out an hour, spend time with a chapter, and think about important things. You know, mm -hmm. um, most people don't do that anymore. No, it's They're hard, so right? Right? You know, we we are so busy doing sometimes. Who knows what we're really right. doing? And and even in church or in synagogue or in mm -hmm. mosque, you'd go and say, "Well, this be the hour that I'll be with the things that are important." But then there are all the things that are being asked of you to do, to speak this thing, to stand mm -hmm. up, to sit down, to sing, and all this. And this where he says, be with yourself. Mm -hmm. Be with yourself thoughtfully. Mm -hmm. No one's watching over your shoulder. No one's telling you what you ought to believe. Only you. But when was the last time you asked yourself that question? What do I personally believe? And to be able to reclaim that, to take that back, to be able to say, this is what's really important. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, we're just playing out scripts in life. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Just wondering. Well, you can pick up your copy of Reclaiming the Soul of Your Faith. Just go to absolutelyamazingebooks.com. Reverend Randy, thank you so much for being on with me this morning. And I will be having Reverend Randy back soon to discuss his other book, The Venice Stories. I'm going to take a quick break right now, but I'll be right back after these messages.